Would you believe that this week's video was all sorted out, it was all planned, and I'd started filming the intro, and I went to go film the practical portion, and I realized the battery that I had for my Edelkrone head one had just disappeared. I literally turned this place inside and out, the house like three or four times, not anywhere. I spent literally two days I wasted just procrastinating and trying to find this damn batch. I even bought extras online so it would turn up quicker because we all know that's how it goes. You lose something, you buy it again, you find it. Didn't work. So funny fact, I actually found the battery. I was cleaning out a drawer under my bed, found some pants I thought I hadn't worn in a while. Turns out I wore them when I shot the last video and uh, the battery was in the deepest pocket. So. Just goes to show, if you lose something, you buy it again, you'll find the original one. <laughs> because I found the battery to the head one, I figured I'd put something on the turntable, and that's what this guy is. This is a Zerotech rifle scope, and this will appear in the video at some stage. So I've shelved that idea for a later date when those batteries do arrive, and once again, found the battery. This is what we're gonna go with today. Instead, I'm gonna show you a super easy way to make a super sick looking hype reel teaser sword video just like this. If you've watched any of my reviews, you know that I do this a bit. It's edgy, it's gritty, it's a bit provocative. No one knows what it means, but it's provocative. In the sense of, you just tease them the whole way, and then at the end you do the big reveal, and this is what the product is. The old tease, the provoking, is the oldest trick in the book. It's the build a bit of hype, bit of suspense about what it is, and then that final reveal shot is the payoff at the end. So this works really well as just like a 15, 20 second hype reel with a big reveal at the end. Or if you saw my FX3 and my A1 videos, what I did with those was a little tease of what this might be, some footage from the camera, tease of what it might be, what it does, and then so on and so forth, rinse and repeat until we get that big payoff at the end. This is FX3. So enough faffing about, what exactly do we need to make this video? Obviously we're gonna need some sort of camera and presumably a lens to go with that. We're gonna need a tripod, a light, and finally the product that we're teasing. I'll be shooting my video on the Sony A7S III with the 2470 G Master. This gives me lots of flexibility, choose different angles and whatnot, but I'll also use the 90mm G Master when I want those detailed tight shots. This might be for the reveal of a logo, a detail, a texture, etc. So the light that I'll be using for today's video is these guys. This is the Nanlite Parvo Tube 30 it's a four foot, full RGB lights, super sick lights. If you saw my recent GFX review, you'd already know, but if you didn't, I've actually partnered with Nanlite as a part of their creator team. So I'm super excited for that. It's very, very exciting times. Onwards and upwards. These Nanlite Parva tubes are gonna be super helpful for this job. First of all, they are battery operated lights. And that means we can move it wherever we want and not be bound to, you know, the restrictions of having cables attached to our lights. So that's pretty cool. Second of all, you notice they're bluey purple right now. They are fully RGB. They have 360 different hues or different colors that we can choose from and customize. So that's gonna be super handy for feeling a little bit frisky, a little bit funky, you wanna add a bit of spice to our edit. Let me add a little bit of spice to that. It's not to say that you can't do this with a different light, these are just the ones I have and they're super helpful for this job. Now, if you are gonna play around with a bit of RGB goodness, just make sure you're choosing appropriate colors. If you're shooting a Fuji camera, their colors are green. If you're shooting a Sony camera, their color is Cinnabar, which is like an orange color. Just make sure we're choosing appropriate colors that represent the brand that we might be trying to tease or, or hype up. Now, our product is next. And as I've mentioned it before, if you've watched my reviews, I do this a lot of the time with cameras. And cameras are a really good option to do this with because they have lots of straight, hard lines mixed with a lot of curves and they make for a real unique way to bend and shape the light. Essentially, that's what we're doing. We're shaping light. You're a wizard, Harry. We're finding lines and edges on our subject, moving the light to cast a different shadow over one area or reveal a different aspect of another area. Now, because I'll be shooting on the S3 and my R4 will be doing my BTS shoots, I'm gonna choose something a little bit different, something I haven't done before on this channel. My two subjects today will be a Nanlite Forza 300 and the Mavic 2 Pro. And the scope. What is really cool about this technique is as we move the light, it makes the object look like it's moving. Now, normally I would double team this and I would use it with my Edelkrone head one, but as I mentioned, I've lost that battery and it's frustrating. Once again, I found the battery. And if you don't know what that does, basically it's just a turntable. It rotates around. So if you have an object, it's moving around and you blend that with a bit of this light shaping, you get some really cool effects. Wow, that was really cool. 
Now, if you don't have a turntable, but you want to add a bit of movement, you could do two things. You could either have a lazy Susan lying around, one of the wooden spinny ones. That's what I actually use for the FX3 shots. And if you don't, go to friend with a tea towel and just pull the item along. Nevertheless, we'll press on today with our stationary subjects. Anyway, let's take our parvo tube, put it above our subject and just move it back and forth side to side and really kind of get a bit of an understanding of what the light is doing with the lines, where it's casting shadows, etc. Once we know it's starting to look good, let's hit record and record a few different moments. Some back, some forth, some twisting, some rotating, some shining the light directly into lens without making the light visible. This should give you a nice bit of flaring. Light the backdrop but not the subject to get a bit of a silhouette. I'll normally just let the camera roll for a few minutes and do a bunch of these different light movements, some slow, some fast, because when you get to the final edit, you just don't know what's gonna work. And if you film something at 24 frames a second and you wanna slow it down, you can't. Did you just call me up? So sometimes it's good to film at 50 or 60 or 100, 120 frames, depending where you are. Especially if you're on a moving surface like a Lazy Susan, because sometimes slowing it down, I've got some of my best shots. Once I've got all the shots that I want from the first angle, I'll change everything about the scene. I'll move the subject, I'll move the tripod, I might shoot off axis. And if I'm shooting on zoom lens, maybe choose a different focal length. And I'll also potentially fill the whole frame with the subject itself. Pro tip, make sure we're using manual focus. This will get our shots nice and tack sharp. If we use automatic focus while we move those lights around, it's gonna invite our camera to hunt focus and ruin some shots. In this case, manual focus will get the best focus every time. That's a fact. And that's a fact. Now, just rinse and repeat this process a bunch of different times for your edit. If we're going for a 15 to 20 second video, we could probably get away with five to six tight macro shots and maybe eight to 10 wider angle shots. Just make sure that they all focus on a different area. They have different elevations of the tripod. Maybe some throw the horizon off. Just get a little bit funky with the angle so that it's not just a repetitive motion. All right. Once we've got all the shots we came to get, it's time to do one of two things. First of all, we're gonna get stuck into the edit, but while we do that, we're gonna be listening to Malimba's new song, Here I Go. So now that you're vibing to Ashley's new song, you're feeling smooth, you're feeling loose, it's time to get stuck into the edit and make some selects. Now, as you're sorting through it and making your selects, if possible, I want you to keep your eye out for one thing. If you've got light movement from one side of the frame to the other, try and match clip one with clip two having that same movement of the light. It'll just make things really seamless and really fluid. And hopefully after you do this a few times, you're gonna come out with a super sick edit and something that's really gonna wow your friends, your families, your colleagues, your clients, whatever. And if you don't follow me on Instagram already, make sure you do, and then send me what you've come up with. I'd be super keen to see whatever you create. Once again, I want to say a big shout out to Nanlight for getting me on their creative team. I'm super excited about this. And if you've been a subscriber since the start, you'll know that every video on this channel has been lit by one of three lights. It's lit. <laughs> I got my two Nanlight Forza 60s, but every inch view I've ever shot has been shot with my Nanlight Forza 300. Super powerful workhorse. I love that thing. The thing that's really cool about Nanlight, they've got a range of products, so it doesn't really matter what your budget is. I'm sure they'll have something just for you. And I'm pumped that a company I've invested in is starting to invest in me. That's pretty cool. So thanks, guys. Thanks so much, guys, for sticking around to the end. That is this one in the books. That's it. That's all. If you want to support this channel, there is two things that you can do. Give it a big fat thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. That stuff helps immensely, and I'm super grateful for every one of you. Other than that, I'd really love it if you went and checked out Malimba. His tunes are awesome. Support Ashley. He's a good dude. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. I was always inclined to make history, but I never really had the time. Spent my life living dangerously, never worried how I'm getting by. I'm out here working, trying to do what I can. Here sweating, dripping blood from my hands Doing what I'm good at Just doing what I'm made for Just like keeps talking about the battery